This is called Spritz with Chinar. Chinar is a drink made out of artichokes, and artichokes grow extremely well in the Venice Lagoon. Oh, mm. I absolutely love it. I love artichokes. <laughs> I don't think this will be lasting very long. It's it really nice. It doesn't taste of artichokes at all. It tastes uh, rather bitter and rich. Mm. It's lovely. It's delicious. I think I'll be revisiting this one. <laughs> so anyway, before I have any more drink, <laughs> <laughs> So Stephanie's been coming to Venice many times now. I think this is my third visit. And we did want to talk about, you know, the beautiful architecture and the art, and, and we wanted to have fun at the carnival. But we are aware that this is a, a fragile environment and something that is beautiful, not just for Italy, but for the entire world. And we just wanted to speak to someone just to, to find out what are the dangers that this city faces what's going on about helping the city face into those dangers and what can we do as visitors as well because we don't want just to have fun we also want to help preserve this place as well first thing first is that no visitor should ever feel guilty about coming to venice um for a few years now when i meet people and they say where do you live and i say venice instead of saying how lucky you are to live in that wondrous place. People say, oh my God, you know, so many problems, the cruise ships, the tourists, the flooding, it's <laughs> sinking, all these things. Whereas um, nearly 30 years ago, when I got married and moved to Venice, people used to say, oh, how lucky you are to be going to live yes. in that city. And so um, the problems of Venice seem to overshadow people thinking like maybe they shouldn't visit here or they should come here in some kind of like grab and run experience it's one of those places that you have to rush to see before it disappears okay so the most important thing is to come for as long as you possibly can coming for an afternoon or coming for a couple of days doesn't really allow you to feel the rhythm of the city, enjoy the wonders of Venice and to learn a lot of new things because mm. there's not just the culture and the dates and the artists and the architectural styles, but there's a lot to do with Venice that, exp that helps us kind of understand the importance of balance in, in life, the, mm. the way that the city and the lagoon have coexisted for nearly 2,000 years. If you stay for a longer time, you have time to visit some of the other islands. You have time to go and look at the salt marsh up close. You have time to go rowing, to go fishing even. And, and that's what I think is important as, as the Venice yeah. experience. So it's I'm a not slower even Venice, really, not, not just rushing Venice. in, seeing the sights and rushing off. Venice is a really good place to work. It's an excellent place for bringing up children. Um, they can do their own thing from about the, towards the end of primary school, kids start to go around by themselves to imagine? ballet, to <laughs> sports, no driving them around in cars, no you know, organizing lifts or anything like that. What are the challenges? So I, I, I want to stay positive, but what are the challenges and what, what, what things are happening to help address them? Okay, so the challenges are two. Okay. Number one is Venice as a living city mm. as relates to the resident population. So mm. there's just the number of people living in Venice has now fallen to about a third it was a couple of generations ago. So it's, it's less than... 50,000 in this wow. bit of, you know, historic mm. ancient city of Venice in the lagoon. 135,000 would be the ideal population of Venice by modern lifestyle standards. Yes. Um, the other challenge for Venice is environmental. Mm. And first and foremost is the relationship between the city and the lagoon, mm. which over the main part of Venice's history is characterized by coexistence. I'd even go so far as to say symbiosis mm. between the physical and natural elements of the lagoon system and the 
essence of the urban fabric of the city. And now that interrelationship is seriously challenged, obviously by the climate crisis yeah. and the expected sea level rise and the increased frequency of extreme events, but also port activities, which have always characterized the economy of Venice, mm. are now creating such pressure on the lagoon system because over time ships have gotten so much bigger yes, than the, now, the galleons yeah. that were produced yeah. in the Arsenale and just mm. had slaves rowing them. Compare that to like the kind of cruise ships you see um, and you realize that, that the movement of th vessels like that through the lagoon requires very wide and deep channels mm. and the wider and the deeper the channels the more erosion that causes on the lagoon okay muds and we can't afford that erosion so when people are coming from the airport on the water taxi and we see those low-lying islands those are the things that are being eroded, is that right? That, yeah, they're yeah, okay. not island, it's salt marsh. Okay. So the nice. intertidal mm. area. So they're too low to be islands because when there's high tide, they get covered oh, in okay. water. Fine. Yeah. And they're too high to just have, you know, algae and mm. worms living in them. Mm. It's marshland. Yeah. And that marshland is really, really important for so many reasons from local to global mm. Lo the local function of the marshland is to attenuate the the currents and the and the force with which the movement of water happens across the lagoon mm. it hosts all these organisms that help to purify the pollutants and the contamination in the water they have all these nice places where fish and crabs live and they, they put their eggs there and birds come and eat the worms that live in the salt marshes. So the, the salt marshes, if they were to become more and more eroded, does that physically affect the stability of the buildings in the city? It, ultimately it will. Okay. I mean, it already has. Right. The amount of salt marsh in the lagoon mm. today mm. is one-sixth wow. the amount that there was um, 500 years ago, okay. half what it was before they dredged the main shipping channel Goodness. across the lagoon. Oh Goodness, so that's quite recent. Yeah. yeah. And we're working hard, doing everything we can to find ways to expand the total area of salt marsh in the lagoon. So what, what kind of work does that involve? Taking mud, um, often it, it's mud that is dredged from the shipping channel. Right. Yeah. So you are the liaising balloon. with the public authorities yeah. to encourage them to do this. So they're yeah. putting the mud together and then helping the, the sort of plant life to grow to be able to create the environment where they become essentially salt marsh again. <laughs> wow, that's fascinating. And I actually had no idea that was happening. So how long have you been working with We Are, we Are Here Venice? We Are Here Venice was established about six years ago. Mm. And it's all about combining best available scientific understanding to be able to have an evidence-based approach to policy making and decision taking that's affecting the future of Venice. Mm. But combining that with the richness of local knowledge and intelligence. And that side of things comes from the fact that I've been living in Venice for nearly 30 years and just the everyday life of Venice yes. is so exceptional. Venice is so much in the kind of global attention mm. that it really depends on us to find a way through not just for Venice but to show the rest of the world that a, a brighter future is possible also because the alternative is to let Venice slip away mm. and then once Venice has gone, you know, that's it for everything and everywhere just like that's, you know, humanity has proved that it's incapable of looking after itself. Yeah. But that is a global loss, it is not simply a Venetian yeah. loss. Yeah. Uh, but is that why you chose the name We Are Here Venice? Because these are decisions that were it's, being made elsewhere. But exactly. We're Here Venice comes from exactly that thought and the fact that um, to save Venice 
it's the the Venetians know best, mm. not in a kind of arrogant, xenophobic way, but it's the local community that can look after the mm. city best. Mm. Anybody can become a Venetian. I can. Mm. I grew. I was born in South Africa, and I grew up in London. But I got this. This is. I put this on it's for you. It's isn't my it? medal. I was given it by the city of Venice. It's called the Ozella d'Oro. Wow. And it's like the keys to the city type of thing. Isn't that and lovely. I, yes. And I, they, I got that in 2017. What an wow. honour. So you were a, a scientist. You are a scientist, an environmental scientist. But you're also talking about the cultural side. I think that's what's so powerful here. Um, mm -hmm. So it's not just the facts and the data. It's the, it's the life, it's the people. And I think that's a really powerful combination. Um, I'm really intrigued, though. So we've got 50,000 people who are Venetians now, and at its heyday it was 150,000, is that right? Around that? So how, how can the number of Venetians be increased? We're doing a poster campaign mm. about how much empty housing there is. I know. And yeah. not just empty housing, but empty public housing. Wow. It's just shameful that there's thousands of apartments that could be assigned from today to tomorrow that are within the remit of the local administration. It's fascinating you say that because I was walking back last night and I was just thinking they're so quiet and are people living in these buildings? They seem so empty. They're very empty mm. and that's what we saw in the pandemic obviously mm. because all the tourists had to leave Venice with COVID um, and remote working, can pe more people come to yeah, Venice and maybe live to here? Live, yeah. Absolutely. This is well, yeah. Come and live in Venice, don't go home. Yeah, I feel quite excited by that, people being able to come here and work. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to just finish with a question, um, which is a kind of burning one on my mind, which is Are you overall optimistic about the future for Venice? <laughs> because you're a scientist by background, you'll be weighing up the sort of, you know, the things that are going well and not so well but can we be hopeful if we all try hard absolutely but the trying hard is the name of the game mm. you know we need to get used to change we need to be willing to do things a lot differently and i really think that Venice needs to represent hope mm. and it needs to show the results of people being hopeful. Yes, with, hope. With the answer with work. There's yes. no point in hope without No, work. exactly. Hope yeah, you can't itself. be, yeah. yeah, you can't, mm. it's not going to happen unless yeah. you, you respond and react. And also the other thing that's, that comes with hope is taking responsibility. Yes. Nobody's going to do any of this yeah. stuff for us. Yeah. I used to work for a CEO who once said, hope is not a strategy, but I do think hope combined with action and actually taking responsibility feels like it can... You need that hope to inject the yeah. energy. For the name of the game is to take action and not to be afraid of the changes. Brilliant. Thank I you. love change. Yes, thank you. Change is important. Yeah, I finished my drink. Oh, yes. No, no. Stephanie, can I, can I ask, so could you do the... Um... So I'm very, very happy because of the viewers of Caddo at the Chateau, we've been able to send the January monetization from the ad revenue from that uh, channel, which is 2,000 euros, to We Are Here Venice. And I'm sure other people will be interested to know how they can donate as well. And we'll put a link to that in the description box below. Thank you so much to you and to all your followers and viewers because um, we really appreciate spontaneous donations because moments like this make me realise maybe we're not barking up, up the wrong tree. I know, there is so much love so for Venice around the globe. So do you think that it's worthwhile? We're going to carry on doing what we're doing.